Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the pathology of the fibrous dysplasia. What is fibrous dysplasia? Fibrous dysplasia is a benign tumor of the bone with developmental arrest during skeletal development having all the components of bone without differentiation into mature structure. What are the four clinical patterns of fibrous dysplasia? It may be confined to one bone, then we call it monostotic. If it is present in multiple bone, we call it mal we call it polyostotic. We have major Broward syndrome that is a type of polyostatic fibrous dysplasia with myxoma. Myxoma is a benign tumor. There is also a benign tumor of the soft tissue. We have the fourth clinical pattern is McCoon Albright syndrome. There is also a polyostatic fibrous dysplasia plus will have cafe a late skin pigmentation and the margin of the this pigmentation mark would be very much zigzag or irregular margin of the the pigmentation of the skin also will get endocrine abnormalities it is a problem of the pituitary gland maybe adrenal pituitary adenoma, adenal adenoma, Cushing syndrome, there may be hyperthyroidism. So, this is fibrous dysplasia, benign tumor of the bone. So, if you look at some of the pictures here, images from Newman and Karanja's clinical periodontology, here there is involvement of the mandible, but it may, it is even more common in the maxilla, yes. So we'll see the, the involvement of maxilla and mandible here. So what will happen? There will be unilateral fibrosis expansion of bone. Okay, there will be facial asymmetry, advanced male occlusion, and Migration of teeth starting from the midline and gingival enlargement. Gingival is being enlarged in accordance with expansion of the underlying bone. Radiograph shows unilateral increase in the dimension of mandible and maxilla here. So we got the asymmetry here, facial asymmetry, and the tumor here that is the fibrous dysplasia here in the mandible and maxilla and there will be male occlusion because this bone carries the teeth so there will be male occlusion okay so and there will be seems to be enlargement of the gingiva also because of expansion of the underlying bone okay we got that now we'll go to find out the pathogenesis and morphology of the fibrous dysplasia. Okay, why this happened? There is mutation of the GNAS1 gene. Mutation produces GS protein that promote cellular proliferation. Okay, that promote cellular proliferation. The extent of phenotype, phenotype is the is the expression of the genotype. The phenotype depends on the stage of embryogenesis, okay, and the fate of cell harboring the mutation, okay. The skeletal manifestation arises from GS cyclic AMP mediated interruption of normal osteoblast differentiation. So, if we look at the morphology here we'll see this are the fibrous tissue that is this bony benign tumor is present in the in the cancellous part of the bone in the spongy part of the bone here we are looking here this is the fibrous tissue and here is the 
Kirby linear trabecule here trabecule of open bone that lack conspicuous osteoblastic rimming. So there is no conspicuous osteoblastic rimming here and it, they look like Chinese letters, Chinese letters. So this is curvilinear here, curvilinear and there is no osteoblastic rimming here. Okay, look like Chinese, Chinese letter uh, in the fibrous tissue here, a lot of fibroblast here. Okay, in the background of fibrous tissue. So that is the histopathology of the fibrous dysplasia. So fibrous tissue, bony trabeculae without osteoblastic rimming. Okay, looking like Chinese letters. That is the picture of the of the fibrous dysplasia of the bone here. This is the bone, and this is the cancellous part of the bone, the spongy part of the bone. Okay. If you go to the clinical course, if we divide monostotic fibrous dysplasia occur equally in boys and girls, usually in the early adolescent period, stops enlarging when growth plate closes. So outcome is good. So once the growth plate is closed, so growth plate is closed, then there will be no progress of the fibrous dysplasia. Okay, any bone may be affected. It may be the maxilla, it may be the mandible, it may be the skull bone, it may be the ribs, it may be the humerus, radius, ulna, maybe the pelvic girdle, it may be the the lower long lower limb long bones, the pelvic girdle, the the femur, tibia, fibula may be affected. Okay, any bone may be affected, often asymptomatic. So it may be diagnosed when a, an X-ray is done, a radiological examination is done, it may be diagnosed, it may be unnoticed, undiagnosed. Bony asymmetry, bone pain with possible fracture is also possible. So it may be asymptomatic, we may have bone pain with possible fracture and X-ray will reveal the lesion. It is managed by curatives if necessary, okay, if it is large, size, bony pain, a lot of complaint, then it can be managed by curatives. Then polyostatic fibrous dysplasia develop at, at early stage and continues to cause problem into adulthood. Multiple bones are affected. Okay, we just discussed any bone, maybe the maxilla, mandible, the skull bone, maybe the ribs, maybe the pelvic girdle, maybe the pectoral girdle, Okay, the radius, ulna, humerus, here we have the hip bone, the femur, tibia, fibula may be affected. Okay, so severe progressive disease with crippling deformity and fracture. Okay, we'll get shepherd crook deformity at the junction between the femur and the, and the hip bone. Okay, there will be coxa vera and angle will be changed between the femur and the and the and the acidabula. Okay, possibilities of development of sarcoma. Okay, sarcoma may develop. This is a connective tissue cancer. And bisphosphonate is a medication may be used to manage bone pain. Surgery may be required. Maybe repeated sur surgery is 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 a necessity. Okay. Then another variety of polyostatic fiber dysplasia is called major Broward syndrome, similar to polyostatic fibrous dysplasia with intramuscular myxoma. Ma intramuscular myxoma is a benign tumor at the same anatomic region. Okay, it may cause compression syndrome. <coughs> so it, it also need to be removed surgically along with the, with the other part of fibrous dysplasia management. So surgery is required according to the symptom and the myxoma. Then McCune Albright syndrome. Here this will be we have three components: polyostatic fibrous dysplasia, cafe a late sign with irregular margin. This is very important. So here we have pigmentation, macule on the skin, but the margin is very much irregular like the coast of main state. 
okay not the coast of california it is the coast of main state a lot of zigzag or irregular margin of the pigmentation of the, on the skin we call it cafe or late sign pigmentation okay there will be endocrine abnormalities very important like precocious puberty excessive growth hormone pituitary adenoma hyperthyroidism cushing syndrome management we have two type of problem one is the polyostatic fibrous dysplasia okay we have also endocrine problem so management by surgical intervention medical management for endocrine problem like one of the example to prevent precocious puberty to manage the symptoms of precocious puberty management by aromatase inhibitor okay so this postponent to decrease bone pain it prevent bone destruction okay and aromatase inhibitor to prevent precocious puberty okay we got that so fibrous dysplasia if you look at that image here radiography enter a posterior view of the pelvis showing polio polyostatic fibrous dysplasia with multiple lesion multiple lesion here okay and what happened with shepherd crook deformity this deformity of the of the neck of the femur with that of the acetabulum the angle of the shaft of the femur so this area forms the shepherd crook deformity okay we have also shown fiber dysplasia makes light sclerotic expansion lesion if you do an x-ray you can easily identify that in the proximal metaphyseal region of the right tibia this is tibia here fibrous dysplasia of tibia treated with curatase and bone grafting okay so we got that from the microsoft powerpoint mccune albert syndrome somatic gain of function function mutation in gnas we have cafe a late spot this is a cafe late spot with irregular margin like the coast of maine okay precocious puberty hyperthyroidism hyperparathyroidism pituitary adenoma and acromegaly and that's all about the fibrous dysplasia if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends please support my channel please subscribe me. and have a nice day bye now